I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 11th of January, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And uh, we're doing a combined episode this morning. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm doing a couple different things. And it really depends on what I'm talking about, just what's going on. Uh, today I'm filming here at the house in the beautiful garden, and I love being able to come out here. It's just so nice and fresh and, and fun to come out. And I'm on the GoPro 9 because I, I, I'm just going back and forth now as, uh, as I get them uploading and different stuff. So today we had the exterminators come over, and this is just part of life. Now, when I lived in Texas, when I lived in New York, I grew up in New York, we never had exterminators. Like, it wasn't a big thing. When I moved to Texas, we always kept exterminators, uh, and they would come over. Actually, we loved our exterminators in Texas. If you happen to live in the Carrollton North Dallas area and you need an exterminator, let me know, because the Premier was fantastic. We kept them for, like, 12 years. They were our exterminators. One of the best services we ever used. They were just so friendly and good, and the price was good. They always showed up, and, like, never, it was just made our lives easy. Anyway, so uh, we um, I had exterminators come over this morning. Um, <laughs> I kind of left out because in Texas you get lots of bugs and big ones. Here in Nicaragua, you actually don't get that many bugs, but uh, when we do get them, they can be a problem. And so real quickly, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna talk a little bit. I'm gonna show some windows while we're talking because there's a bunch of things that are just different here and it's worth noting why things are different. But being a warm country, uh, you do want to have exterminators. Uh, if nothing else, ants, termites, that kind of stuff can be a little bit of a problem. It's not huge. You can live without it, but a lot of things that are done here are done for the purpose of bug abatement, right? Like uh, I showed in one of my shorts recently, and I'll do this in a real video sometime, but they like uh, people rake all the leaves together and, and burn them. Uh, that's to keep the ground clear so that bugs don't live up against your house. It's just a way to keep it from being super attractive to bugs. And, um, and so you have exterminators and it's just a lot of things that you do. And, th and then the, the mosquito guys come around. I really wish I could get a video of them coming at some point where they come and they inspect the house and they go through everything. It's just really interesting and it's such a great service that they do. Okay, so that was the day. Otherwise, it was just really busy at work. I had a lot of like evening work tonight. So I ended up working, um, I think until about uh, 1230, like half past midnight. Uh, so my day was pretty busy, had a little bit of time in the evening and then a really busy night. It was just some days are really busy with work and today was one of them. So I'm doing the video out here, but in some of my videos recently, okay, so the topic of the day is not exterminators and not my work, but my topic of the day is actually uh, security and the way that homes are secured in Nicaragua. And the reason is, and I mentioned this on a short and I, in a, or it got mentioned in like another video, but I really want to do something that you, you can search on. And, and talk about, and I'm gonna turn the camera around a little bit and show you a little bit. Uh, but some people saw the video and they said, wow, the place is so beautiful, but it looks terrifying because of that wall. So I'm gonna turn around and show a little bit so I can point on the screen and, and show you what it, so if you look up here, uh, hopefully you can see it, we'll, we'll walk a little bit closer. We have a main gate out front and it has these metal spikes on top. These are actually pretty pleasant. They're, they're effective, but they look really attractive. And then we have these beautiful plants on top of them so you don't really notice too much, which is kind of perfect uh, as far as having security that it can be attractive. And there's a lot of different attractive things that have been done here in Nicaragua. Uh, and you'll notice that we don't have like spikes or anything, but on top of the gate up there, I don't know how visible it is, but there's a lot of just metal decorations up there that make the gate much taller in effectiveness than it actually is. And then this really tall part of the wall here uh, has nothing visible on top of it. There's probably something spiky up there that we don't see. Uh, but here where the wall is lower, you have uh, barbed wire or, or Constantine, right? This is like razor wire. And this is pretty much everywhere on high walls in Nicaragua and all through Latin America. This has nothing to do with Nicaragua specifically, nothing to do with this region, nothing to do with this city or anything like that. This is how this type of wall is made for a couple reasons. Um, and part of it is just to make it higher. You'll notice that it's only the same height as the wall over there. It's used to be a much cheaper way with more airflow uh, to get that level of security. So let's talk about this because this is interesting because people say, wow, you have razor wire. Like in the United States, if you had razor wire like that, it would denote you're probably a prison or something, right? Like it would be really dramatic for you to have that. And it seems like that must mean this is really scary. And that's a cultural thing. The opposite would be true if people from here went to the United States and saw how we built houses, they would react in different ways. Wow, you have to secure this other stuff. It must be really scary, right? And so let's talk about that. In the United States, the context that most of you have, Western Europe, Canada, United States, we have sealed homes. 
The houses themselves are fortified for all intents and purposes. The idea that someone's gonna break into your house is that someone will break into your house. We use the term break in because they have to kick down a door, pick a lock, break a window, throw a rock through. There's like all these things you have to do that are pretty hard. You're not gonna casually break into someone's house. You have to siege the house. Now it's, I'm not saying it's insurmountable, right? But, and when I had my house in Texas, it was surprisingly easy to get in if you really wanted to. But in general, houses are pretty well secured and uh, they're sealed all the time because we use central air. And that's because during the summers, we tend to get pretty hot, so we cool the house. And during the winters, we're, we tend to be pretty cold, so we heat the house. And so you're always dealing with a central air and a, and a sealed system. So the house is not just sealed for security reasons, it is sealed for temperature control reasons and, and environmental control. Uh, so that is just the context that most of us have. And so when we start with having a house like that, at night, when you go to bed, you're locking up the house, right? Close the doors, throw the deadbolts. Now you're secure. You're inside your sealed air house. Now, of course, there's spring and fall, and maybe you're going to put screens on the windows and have some open air. That's fine. But at night, we typically lock it all up. And even then, there's screens over the windows or whatever. Like, you're just not going to have animals walking in and out. We have to have uh, cat doors and dog doors if you want your dogs and cats to be able to ingress and egress easily because there's no other way for them to get in and out. That is the context we come from. If we then have a fence around that house, which we do quite often for privacy, especially in the South, that fence is often not that tall because its job is not actually to be a security barrier, maybe to keep your dogs in, right? But it's not really to keep an intruder out. If an intruder wants to come over those walls, typically they can, but it's there for privacy. Once they're inside that, that wall, they still, it's breaching the house that they would have to do. Now, of course, having a fence gives you a little bit more sense of security because, well, you'd see them, they'd have to make some noise, of course. But in, in general, the house itself is secure. And in like cities, it's the house that's secure, right? It's, it, there is no fence. Here in Nicaragua and most of Latin America, we don't do that at all. We have a completely different lifestyle, and that lifestyle is one of open air. And so the houses are fundamentally open, not fundamentally closed. Now I'm going to show this one, because this one is more closed than most, but I'm going to show a couple examples. Like we have a wide open door down here, and these windows have no screens. I'm going to walk up and show. This is how windows are typically done. They have bars on them, so a cat could, could theoretically come and go quite easily, and often will. That's a real thing that will happen. Now our little dog does not make it through there for those who are wondering. He doesn't quite fit, but he almost could, couldn't you? <laughs> and that one definitely can't. Uh, but the house during the day, for reasons of cooling and reasons of, of really simple egress and, and ingress, we have many doors open during the day. The windows are essentially open. Um, it's very, very easy to walk in and out. We're coming and going and, and people are doing it as I'm saying this, going in and out of the doors that are wide open because you just, the yard, the inside of the house, it's all one space, right? And we instead have gates in the outer wall. Now this is not a colonial, this is a more modern house. But if this was a, a more traditional colonial, I'll turn around again. This outside wall would be outside, but above that, that roof would be an interior open space. Now this one is not because it's a little bit more modern, uh, but we do have an, a, like a skylight that's open air and as the air comes across, it sucks things up, but you can't get into it. Um, but most colonials, the middle of the house is wide open. Often it's way too large to put a roof over. And so the, the risk is that anyone who wanted to enter a house or any animal that wants to enter the house simply has to get on the roof, walk up and let themselves down because it's wide open. There's no door, there's no window, it's just open. The idea that you would have to break in doesn't exist because the house is wide open. So because of this, because there's this already this incredibly wide open all the time concept, we shift the security from being that this house is sealed to being that the grounds are sealed. And so here, and ignore the pergola, because that may look like security on the camera, but it is not, that's just a pergola. But we have an outside fence with a spiked top that goes all the way around and then becomes the big outer wall and continues all the way around the house. And the same thing exists all the way around the backside. And then there's another wall outside of that because we're inside a gated community. So we have a big gate that lets people in. So we have multiple of these big walls here. And that is how things are done everywhere. Now you may see some houses where they put, uh, they put the razor wire up on the roof 
And that's because they don't have that outer wall. They're like a city house. And they have to keep people from going into the middle of their colonial houses some other way. So that's how they handle it. Here we handle it up there. And it's also really common here because of the cost of living, because of a lot of different factors. It's much more popular here to have security guards. So here at this house, at night, we don't do it in the middle of the day. Like right now, we have to go, like, you don't need it. There's no reason. But at night, just to keep people from coming in and for all the convenience and just the incredible security, sense of security that it gives you, we have a security guard at night. So we have a house that does lock up. Ours is not wide open, so we can actually lock the doors and do it at night. We have the bars on the windows. Now, we don't have screens. Notice, this is where we sit for coffee in the morning. There's no screens on these windows. Now, there is on my office window, but not on the main house windows. And partially that's because we leave the doors open all day and the roof is like there's so many things that are open there'd be no point in having screens on most rooms the bedrooms yes because you might have close those up and just have the screened windows at night but otherwise the house is so wide open during the day that having screens would just be completely impractical but you still don't want people to be able to just fall in a window so there's there's bars on things plus it allows you to have antique glass behind it or whatever um and so for for many houses like this, we have we are, have the ability to lock it all up at night and do. And then we have this interior fence that you see that we lock up. And then we have the exterior wall that we lock up. And then we have a security guard. So the level of security is really high. And then that begs the question, well, is it so high because it's so dangerous? Yes and no. It is so high because it's so easy and practical to make it that way, and that's where it has to be. The same question, do you have to have your house so incredibly secured in the United States that it's airtight? No, it's for practical reasons, and that's how you manage the security. It just works out that way. So it's, it's, a, it's a practical, this is how it works here because of the lifestyle. This is where we put the security so it's visible in a different way. The reason that this particular security is this way um, is that uh, uh, in the United States, if you have a home intruder, there's a really high chance that they're armed. Certainly not guaranteed, but it, it's, it's, it's pretty risky. Here, the chances that someone intruding into your house is going to be armed is actually pretty low. People who are going to intrude into your house are mostly uh, people who are looking for opportunity. They're looking for a wall they can hop over, grab something from your house, hop back over the wall and get out. It's a very opportunistic thing. Um, and so with a little bit of effort, a little bit of spiky stuff, a little bit of you're going to be bypassed, right? You're just not worth uh, breaking into or, or sneaking into uh, because, uh, and especially with dogs that make noise, that's going to drive people away. Like, they're, people are afraid of dogs. And with a security guard out there, like, never would someone try something. Like, the risks are so high. Um, but part of the secret is making it just that little bit more risky. It, it makes it really not an issue. If you don't have those things, yes, people do break into houses, um, certainly with a higher frequency than in the US. It is a less violent crime, but it is a more common crime. Um, uh, but, but really, people are looking for what's loose. They're not taking your televisions normally out the roof or anything. They're just finding if there's cash, if there's something you know kind of valuable they can grab, they'll grab it and run, right? It's, uh, it's a very different type of home invasion that you have to protect against. And that's what this really does a great job of protecting against. Now for us, we love having the security guard at night and we learned this from being at the hotel. Sleeping and watching someone walk by with a flashlight all through the night, knowing there's someone out there, not just for security, not just uh, invasion security, but there's also someone out there. What if you went out and fell over in the night? Well, there's always someone to call an ambulance. What if the kids want to go out and get water? Well, there's someone to help them in the middle of the night. What if you need toilet paper delivered to your room? Okay, it's more of a, more of a, a hotel thing, but it's still great. Like, oh my gosh, the toilet paper is not, I don't want to get out and walk down. I'm just going to call down and have them bring it. It's fantastic. Here, we get food delivered at night, which is a common thing, right? They go get it at the gate. They know we've ordered, they let them in, right? If they know who it is, they'll let them through security. If not, they'll just get it at the gate, bring it to the door. They'll walk with us to the door. They'll come get us at the door, whatever. We have this person, so like all this stuff is managed. You come out at night and there's just a person that we know standing here watching over us. It, it gives you such a level of comfort. And then for us, we also have the advantage that we have a live-in chef. And uh, so we have multiple people spread out throughout the house. So we have like really good interior monitoring as well. So it'd be really hard to be anywhere in the house because there's someone who will hear you, see you. You'll have to cross through a part of the, of the complex that is barricaded off from somewhere else. It's really, really hard to sneak around without someone catching you. And I'll point out, I don't know if you can see this, but the, between the back and the front gardens is another security gate. And each of the gardens is independently locked 
on its own. So there's like all these different layers of things you'd have to get into and then you couldn't get between them and, and there's different people in different ones. There's just so much visibility, so much difficult to get in, so much effort would have to go into getting, getting in or out that uh, uh, it's, there's a reason why security is done this way. It's, it's incredibly practical and yes, you do have to accept there, there is a certain risk of people hopping over walls. You don't want to say that that's not something that would happen if you don't protect against it. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of people living in a lot of poverty who would be willing to see what they could grab from your house and run for it. Um, and since people don't tend to be armed, it, the whole interaction tends to be a bit less scary. You're less scared of people getting in. They're less scared of getting caught inside your house. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but good, smart, common sense protection against it looks like this. This is so easy and so cheap and so universal, so expected. Nobody looks at it and says, oh, you have razor wire? That's not good, right? It doesn't matter if you're in super rich Panama. It doesn't matter if you're in, in middle tier Mexico. It doesn't matter if you're in you know, lower income Nicaragua. Everywhere does the same thing in Latin America. It is, everybody likes to live outside. Everyone has this in out kind of lifestyle that goes on. And because of that, this is just the thing that makes sense. The United States lives so differently that it would not make sense to have the barricades there. You, you put them in different spots because of the lifestyle. And so it's a cultural thing, right? Just learning that the culture is different and what you're looking at does not necessarily represent what you think it does uh, is a really interesting experience actually, um, but also really important. So when you're looking at moving down here, don't look at areas and say, ooh, there's Constantine wire, it must be a bad area. There's other indicators. That is not one of them. That may actually be an indicator that it's a good area. There's stuff to protect uh, and people could just walk in from somewhere, right? So when you see it, instead say, ah, that is a, that's a good use of Constantine wire. That's pretty attractive and it's in good shape. So I won't have too much maintenance to do. And, uh, and it helps keep people from coming in and nabbing the dogs. I don't think people would do that. All right. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, get down there, ask away, leave your comments down there. What are your experiences? Have you had a home invasion here? A lot of people have, so that sucks, right? It's a thing. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'll put that link below, pop it down there. We went to Dr. Coffee the other day, fantastic coffee, walking distance in Sutiava. I mean, it's a pretty long walk, but I just did it. And uh, they have nice sandwiches and stuff. New place that I'm, I'm excited to, to be checking out more. And of course, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow.